Chris Paul is like a great teammate, a great all-time player. Those two were ball dominant players. So it was, and he had Russell Westbrook and he had Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant. Like, I'm just saying, man, I'm not trying to make excuses for him. I'm, uh, you know, Joel Embiid is not like any of those on a, on a personality type of level. Yeah, that, that is a point. And he hasn't played with a player. The other superstars almost, I mean, they all, the other superstars kind of played the same position as him. Yeah. He hasn't played with a superstar exactly. that can balance his game. Yeah. You know? Yep. Caller on the line. What's going on? My bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. Kobe Kobe Bryant was someone who was admired by James Harden. He loved him. He respected him. Kobe Bryant said to him, to James Harden, he said, I'm not a fan of your style in terms of it winning championships. That's when he was in Houston. And James Harden completely metamorphosized his game and started becoming more of a playmaker. I see the national media shaping this narrative that James Harden can only play one way, iso ball, or just one-on-one. He's strictly a pick-and-roll guy. He's able to play any style, any way, with any team, with any set of teammates. He is a basketball player. Let's keep that in perspective, because the national media is going to completely turn the narrative around. But once... Joel starts incorporating that role on the pick and roll. You know, Harden loves to do uh, uh, alley oop, something that Ben never did with MB. We're going to see a little bit more of that. You're going to see easier scoring from Joel, and I think you're going to see the team flourish around him. He is known to make his teammates better. Great show, guys. Love it. Keep it up. Just want to give you that uh, that point. No respect. Thank you. Thank you. Call, man. It's a great point. Great point. call. Great call. What a yeah. call. Exactly oh, yeah, right. Dude, it, it, as soon as all three of them, and, the, and all three of them played, like, what, 12 games together in two seasons now? Mm-hmm. Uh, but as soon as he got on the floor with Kyrie and Kevin Durant, he had 13 points, 15 rebounds, and 17 assists. Like, he literally took an entire backseat and was just diamond left yeah. and right. So yeah. I he agree was with the him. One guy, yeah. He, he was adapt. the one guy who changed his game. He was the one guy who knew he had to change his game because the other two won it. Like, I, we've yeah. said that. I mean – he is the guy who wants to win. He's the guy who is willing to take the backseat if it's need be. And that's that's a great point, dude, because if you look back at old Harden, he was just a six-man bucket getter, came into Houston, he was putting up 38 a game, whatever it was, but he was getting like four assists, five assists, and then all of a sudden he turned it on. I'm about to look up the stats, actually. I'm interested. I, I want to make a point about that, too, because I remember on these shows last year, especially when it was just me and DJ taking so much heat because we were the ones that said, you know, we would have still given Ben a chance. Like we wanted to keep him, see what it turned into. We were dead wrong. Okay. But I remember specifically every single day, people reminding us the same people that turn like that on James Harden, how great he was doing in Brooklyn every single day. It was, yo, did you see Harden tonight? He had a 20 point triple double. He had a, you know, he had 15 assists. I remember it every single day. And now all of a sudden he's, he quit on his teammates. No, he had a selfish teammate. And the situation didn't work out. It is what it is. And now he's in a situation he wants to be in. I think he's more motivated than ever. He's averaged at least 10.2 assists a game every single year since 2018. (laughs) That's crazy. And what year is that? Is that when he started the year that he started playing with Chris Paul? Uh, Probably. But he also had 36 a game that year. So (laughs) good Lord, man. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing about it. Like I said, he's, I said, he's, He's on the air quotes downside of his career. Like, obviously, if you watch 2017, 18, he was insane. Yeah, his athleticism. I I think well, if you just watch his, if you just watch his highlights this season, he's not he's not even dude. close to athletic as athletic as he was. Yeah, athletically, yeah. yeah. But as a player, I don't think so. I, I mean, I think he's the product of a three big headed monster. Exactly. You know? I when think he put him in another position. If he stayed with Houston, bro, he'd still be putting up 30 plus a game. Yeah. He, when, when, when Kevin Durant. Do you think he can get back to that shape, that physical yes. shape? Uh, I, I mean, maybe not the bounce. Maybe not the bounce the same. He but was I mean, postering people. He's he's not going to look the same, but I believe in, in any night, like say Embiid's not playing well or he's deferring, whatever. Like Harden can put up 30 when he needs to, and he can yeah. look like the old Harden because when when Kevin Durant, for example, went to Golden State. No, the old State, Harden was 60. 
Huh? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying the yeah. old Harden was 60. Like this, the old Harden he was, needed to be 60. The old Harden needed right. to be 60. He's just way, like, he, he, you he have was a so he was so elite that even if he's not that, he's still one of the best players in the game. I think saying. both of you guys are right yeah. because like is he probably as athletic as he was? No, you know, oh, his yeah. balance is probably not the same, but he has revamped his game. Um, and he is, I think, equally as good and productive as a player as he was in his prime yeah. time era. So, I mean, both yeah. of you guys are right, I think. And and people love to look at numbers. When Kevin Durant went to Golden State, I was personally upset. Like, you know, Steph Curry's not going to be in the MVP running anymore. But what did he do? He adapted his game. Like, it wasn't like Steph has to put up 40 on a given night or Clay has to put up 30 on a given night. Like, they adapted. That's what happened in Brooklyn. James Harden. Look, look at the assist numbers. Like, yeah. it, it's not like he just fell off the face of the earth. And, and don't I, no. I don't want to hear about this year. Like, this has been an awful year for the Brooklyn Nets. Like, I don't know, man. I, I think he can still give us really good games. James Harden also has only ever had one season is in his entire career with less than a steal a game. He's averaging 1.4 this year. So defensively, eh, he's not as bad as people probably give him credit for. Nah, he's improved a lot ever since he was on on blast about uh I remember a couple years ago they were like this guy's the worst defender ever. <laughs> he lo he low key got better, but nobody really like paid attention to it, you know. Bro, yeah. with the year he had 36 a game, he had over two steals a night and almost a pit point nine blocks. Bro, James Harden is a you know, you know, Greg. Defender. I I forgot to bring up this point, but I want to go back to what you said earlier. That game yeah. seven, if if Chris Paul doesn't get hurt, the Rockets probably win the championship. They win that because the they Rockets. And yeah, they win game seven because let's not forget, then they have the most historically bad shooting night ever. Like, yeah, I, I forget what it was. They shot like 27 straight threes. They missed, I think. Yeah. And they shot like 10 for like 40 something on a night or something like that. Yeah. And that was without Chris Paul. If they win that game, they go to the finals. First off, they take down one of the best teams of all time. Maybe the best. They go to the finals against the LeBron led Cavaliers. Like they probably win that series if it wasn't for that injury and a historically bad shooting night. So, I mean, they were there. They were on the yeah. ropes, man. And and Embiid's a better fit alongside Harden than Chris Paul was. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's take a call from Grand Rapids, Michigan. What's going on? Hey, yo, you hear me? What's going on, man? Yo, yeah, I just wanted to piggyback off of uh, what – what the other guy was saying about Harden, man. I'm a, a, a lifelong Harden fan. Well, not a lifelong, but I've been following him since the Rockets days. I want to just clear some of the air about this, you know, old Harden and Houston Harden. Look, let's get something straight. There, Harden's play, there's nothing really in his game that has changed. What, what, what has changed is the spacing. Harden, what people fail to realize, unless you're a, a fan of Harden and literally watched him since Houston, you wouldn't understand. But Houston was built around Harden. They ran a five-out offense. It was made for his play style, okay? There was nobody in the paint. Therefore, Harden is the best isolation player that we've, you know, possibly ever seen. So it was either take his guy one-on-one -on -one, and the teams had a choice. They either could help, and he would kick it out to the three ball. That's why they were shooting all those threes and making it. Or they could not help, and he's finishing at the rim, possibly for an and one. You feel me? The spacing in Houston was crazy. Then he goes to Brooklyn, right? The spacing at first was great. When he had Kyrie, KD, he had shooters, Joe Harris, Okay, then it goes less later on. That's when he was putting up the numbers when he was uh in the MB MVP race. You feel me? This is less than 200 days ago. I, I don't want people to forget. Now that he's back in the system, because he was looking horrible these last couple, you know, months or whatever, but I want people to know why. KD goes down. That's one less shooter. Joe Harris down. That's one less shooter. Kyrie wasn't playing. That's another person. So all these teams that have been playing him on the Nets this year, double, double hardened, double hardened. And there's nothing he can do because there's no spacing. Now that we're he's on the Sixers, I promise you, it's going to be hectic for teams because he's now back in the system that's surrounding him 
with shooters. Even Joel can shoot. And then the paint dominance of Joel, teams are really going to have to pick their poison. And I don't think it's going to be something they can stop. And I really feel like Harden can, like, put up 25, 30 on any given night on this team in this system. And I just need – everybody could just got to believe in him because he's definitely – nothing in this game has diminished. He's motivated. And I think that within these next two years, he'll have a ring. Hey, man. Yo, thanks for the call, man. We appreciate it. Another great call, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm not I'm – not, again, uh, it, there's – it's not really – you can't. I don't think you can really argue that Harden is as athletic right now as he was in those highlights when you watch Harden's career highlights he he was he was taking the rebound sprinting down the court faster than everybody on the court and jumping from almost the foul line and dunking on people that's not what he plays like right now i just think he's so his basketball iq is so elite that he's adapted his own game to slowing down a little bit because he's 32 almost 33 he's not 26 27 there's a difference but i i just think he's so elite iq wise that he's still a guy that can drop 30, 30, 30 point triple double on anybody. But I'm, I mean, he, he's just not even close to as athletic as he was back then. That's yeah. what I'm saying. He's also putting up 37 minutes a game this year. Holy shit. Imagine doc playing out James Harden for 37 minutes a night. Immediately. Our team is significantly better. Yeah. You know, it, when it, when he lost motivation at the end of Houston and he came in and looked like he had a fat suit on and then he went to Brooklyn, maybe he hated it right when he got there. Maybe he's had no motivation to get back into that physical shape that he was. If he gets back into that physical shape, it's over. If we're winning three rings, the guy was out of this world. So, you know, I hope so. Yeah, I I mean, even though he's not as athletic, like he's like you said, he's still going to be like a dominant player. Like just because he gained some weight and got a little bit bigger as he went on, like, you know, I, I don't buy the whole notion that, like, his game's not going to age at all. Like, I agree. He's no, out. He ages perfectly, yeah. It his game perfectly. is not, is not like, predicated on his athleticism. It's never been. He is the craftiest dude in our yes. generation. He is the craftiest dude in the NBA from the moment he came in. It's not on his speed. He's not Russell Westbrook. Like, this man – knows how to play the game at the highest of levels. And he does it on every single part, every single aspect of the game. He, he is an extremely intelligent player. He shoots 88% from the line from his career. This man will be hitting free throws when Ben Simmons was afraid to ever get to the line. It changes everything. Harden's game will grow. It is always has. And he doesn't need to be this blow by athlete because he never really right. has been. I mean, he, he was crazy athletic, but it's always been hesitation moves, step back moves. The, his floater game is like, bro, him and Tyrese have the best floaters in the NBA and they're both on our team. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. And I'll that's, argue why I, that's why I think he's going to be, he's going to be good for longer than people think he is. People are saying, Oh, two years, you got two years left or whatever. When you say he's crafty, he has that old man game. He's that guy at the pickup court. That's literally 58 years old schooling kids because of just his IQ, just his pump fake, his up and under, his his footwork, all that stuff. So uh, I think even even as he gets closer, if he wants to, if he retires, he retires. But if he wants to, he could play till he's 40 because he's just that high IQ of a basketball player. Yeah, and I'm glad uh, Greg brings up Russell Westbrook because that is the pure example of a guy whose game does not translate. And, you know, he can just keep running it downhill, running into the ground, like – you put him with other stars, you see what happens. Like, you can't win with that guy. James Harden can adapt his game. And, you know, I would even argue it's better for his game to age being with Joel Embiid because it's not like he has to put up 50 every single night. You know, like now there's a guy that can take the pressure off of Joel and there's a guy that can take the pressure off James as well. Like, I, I just think it's the perfect duo. I think it's the guy we've been waiting for this entire time, a guy just like that. And somehow we got him, man. Um, That's always been the thought in the back of our minds when we got Daryl Morey, though, right? I mean, this has always been 